So last Saturday, I went out to do some evangelism with Jacob. Now I've done this before, but it's usually been around like at U of T, at my school. However, this time my accountability partner, Jacob slash disciple, we went out to do some evangelism around uh, Jane and Finch. I've never done evangelism at Jane and Finch. And the reason why I never do evangelism there is because like, I'm just never there. It's not because it's supposedly dangerous or anything. It's just, you know, it's Jane and Finch is kind of out of the way of where I'm usually at, which is like downtown or like Northeast. And so, yeah. This time though, another one of our friends invited us to do evangelism there because of an organization that our friend works for that does charity work around Jane and Finch. So the organization gave us a little bunch of gifts so that we can give to people around the area and how to talk about their charity organization, about the gospel. Uh, and uh, after doing all those things, they sent us to Jane and Finch Mall. After praying and then walking around a little bit, we saw this one person sitting in front of the Dollarama on like a t one of the tables and uh, they were alone and so we decided to go to that person. Now, beforehand, Jacob and I decided on our opening lines, like what to say, you know, like I would, I would say hi and we would introduce one another and then talk about the organization right after that and then ask if we could have a conversation and, and, uh, and sit down with the people. Uh, but Jacob, uh, he does none of that. <laughs> So we walk up to this guy and the first thing that Jacob says is, hey, what are you doing? Can we sit down? And I was like, so at first I assumed that this person was a man, by the way, uh, but the moment this person looked up, I realized that, wait a second, this guy might not be a man. This person was like wearing really baggy clothes and had like a toque on so I couldn't see any of the hair, but then it looked like the chest was very big and I couldn't tell if... And then when this person started to talk, it was at this like really ambiguous, like right over here, like this ambiguous range right over here. And it was like, it could have been a very high man's voice or a very low woman's voice. I think the only thing that was obvious was that this person was Jamaican by the accent and the complexion of their skin. And the person looks up and then looks at Jacob and, and says, and be, looks back down and just says like, I'm not that much into conversation. Now, I would have been like, oh, I, don't worry about it. Have a nice day. And then I would have walked away. But Jacob uh, literally sits, sits down next to the person and then says, why not? Why, why don't you like conversation? Now at this point, I'm just so shook that I, I don't, I don't ask anything. I'm not saying anything. I just sit right next to Jacob. The person like doesn't answer Jacob. And so Jacob, asks another question. He says, uh, so what's your name? And then this person says, I don't tell my name to strangers. The, the, the feeling is not good at the table, but like Jacob keeps on pursuing it and asks like, uh, can we guess what your name is? Like, what does your name start with? Like what letter does your name start with? And surprisingly the guy answers and he says like, N. Now I don't really know anything about Jamaican names. Like I don't know like what are the usual Jamaican names, but like Jacob at this point, like he's looking up and he's really thinking hard about what kind of name. He's just thinking a little bit too long. And so I feel like I have to say something in order to like fill the silence. I just go, uh, Nigel. And the person doesn't say anything. And so I'm thinking, uh, Nadia? Shakes his head, not Nigel, not Nadia. Uh, spoiler alert, we never got the person's name. And we never even, I, I couldn't really even figure out if he was a man or a woman by the end. But for the sake of the video, I'm just going to call this guy Nigel. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to assume that this guy was a man. Jacob finally snaps out of it and shakes his head and is like, I, this is too hard. And then he asks, can I guess your age instead? Again, I don't know if this person's a woman and I don't know if that's an inappropriate question. But then surprisingly, Nigel looks up and he says, with like a wry smile that says, bet you can't. So we start taking this as a game and we start to like start guessing. Uh, Jacob says 40 and I say like 30. He doesn't have any facial hair or anything like that. Or he's not actually a man, so he shouldn't have facial hair. But then like Nigel's smiling and he says, no, I'm 53. And Jacob reacts way too loud and he's like, 53? Why are you look so young? And he says, I'd be walking in the glory of God. I'm not going to do the Jamaican accent, by the way. I'm just, I'm just so bad at it. Anyways, I answer and I say, oh, you believe in God? And I'm just happy at this point that we're back on topic. 
and that we could leave everything else behind us. And then he asks us, do you know what he did for you? Like, do you know what God did for you? And I'm thinking like, Sunday school question. He died for us. But he says, no, he kills for you. No, you mean he died for me. And then like Nigel just shakes his head and then he tells us this story about this time when this policewoman like racially profiled him. And afterwards, Nigel, he heard from God that she would get into an accident a week later and die. And then actually a week later, she got into a car accident and died. I, I have no clue what to say to that. I don't know what, to, like, that's his experience, right? And so I don't know, like, I can't be like, that didn't happen. But I, I, just to like get a sense of what Nigel actually believes, I ask like what church he goes to. But then when I ask him that, this woman just clearly Jamaican lady is walking by and she says, you boys talking about church? And then she sits down right next to us. And I don't know if she knows Nigel or I don't know if this is just like what you can expect at Jane and Finch. I don't even, I don't, at this point, I don't even know what normal human interactions are anymore. I just, because it seems like Nigel's completely fine with her just like sitting down and he starts telling her about like how God assigned the angel Gabriel o over him to protect him. But then this like clearly Jamaican lady looks at Nigel and, and then like says to him, but do you take time with God? And she starts going off on Nigel. She starts asking, but do you take quality time with God? Do you spend quality time with him? And then she goes, she goes, you see, you see them Muslims? They be praying on the floor every day, everywhere, in the mall, in their factories, they be praying. But we as Christians, we have to, we have to find the time to, to spend with them and we've got to find the time to fast. Sitting there, I'm thinking like, God, God, are you trying to tell me something? Because it's, it's very clear. It's very, it's coming off very clear. And can I, can I go now? And then she continues and she's like, and I pray like from six to eight and I'm praying from, from three to five because I'm a prayer warrior. I'm a prayer warrior. And then Nigel's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he starts going off about that like angel Gabriel thing, like how God is powerfully protecting him with angel Gabriel. And then like mercifully while this conversation is going, uh, the friend that brought us out to Jane and Finn, she's passing by and he says, oh, we gotta wrap it up because like it's time to go now. And then the Jamaican lady, uh, finally, she's like done with all that. And she says like, she has to go too. And then she gets up and then she leaves. We try to like end the conversation on a good note. And we tell Nigel, thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing your experiences with us. And then Jacob before leaving tries to tell Nigel, hey man, like, Maybe God did kill for you, but you gotta know also that God died for you, that God, that God through Jesus Christ died for your sins. Like we try to like, you know, add something to the conversation, but Nigel's like not having it. And he starts going off again about the police woman story. And at that point we're like, okay, man, that it's a great story. Thank you very much. And then we say bye and Nigel says bye. And Nigel looks really happy uh, at the end of the conversation. And, um, but yeah, that, we get up and then we and then we go and then that that was it. I don't know. I just think I have to get to know Jane and Finch people better. Uh, Jacob and I are going again in January, so <laughs> better luck then, I guess. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the story as much as I enjoyed experiencing it. And uh, yeah, grace, peace, and see you in the next one.